Hey there, how's it going everybody? In this series of videos, we'll be going over the basics of Python programming. Now I get a lot of messages from people who say that they enjoy my Python videos, but that they're either just getting started out in programming or coming from another language and would like a beginner's overview of Python so that they can better understand the more advanced topics. And that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna cover how to get up and running with Python, how to work with the different data types, um, how to work with conditionals and loops and iterations, how to create functions, um, also importing modules and working with the standard library. So basically everything that you need to know in order to have a firm understanding of the Python fundamentals. Now one thing I do want to point out is that throughout these tutorials, I'm going to go over a few topics that I've already made deep, more detailed videos about, and anytime that happens, I'll touch on the basics of that topic, but then reference the more detailed video if you'd like to see more examples. And that will allow us to move along at a good pace. So let's go ahead and get started. So first we're gonna learn how to install Python and set up our development environment. And we're gonna look at how to do this on both Mac and Windows. And this is pretty straightforward process. So first we'll look at how to do this on a Mac, but if you're on a Windows machine, then you can look in the description section below and I'll put a link to the timestamp where we start the installation for Windows and that way you can skip ahead if you want. Um, or if you already have Python installed for your operating system, then I'll also put a link to the timestamp where both of these installations are complete so that you can skip to where we're ready to write some code. So for a Mac, Python usually comes pre-installed. To check if Python is pre-installed, then we can just open up our terminal, and within our terminal, we can say python dash dash version. Now we can see here that the default Python is Python 2.7. Now it used to be more controversial as to which version you want to use, but almost everyone is moving over to Python 3. And if you're learning Python, then you're definitely going to want to go with Python 3 unless you have a really good reason to do otherwise. So let's go ahead and install the latest version of Python 3. So to do this, we're just going to pull up an internet browser and we're going to go to the Python website, which is here at python.org. And from here, we can go to downloads. And we can see that it already detected that we're on a Mac and has offered up either Python 3 or Python 2. And we want to go with the latest version, Python 3.6. So that's going to download a PKG file and we will click on this to go ahead and start the installation. Now this is a pretty standard walkthrough here. If you've installed software before, then all, a lot of this will look familiar. So we're just going to agree to some terms. Uh, you can change the install location if you want. I'm just going to leave that as the default. And you may need to put in your password to install this. Now once that's finished installing, it will place a Python 3.6 directory in your applications folder. And if we open up our applications folder, and scroll down here a bit, then you can see I have an old version of Python 3.5 here, but it installed this Python 3.6. And if we open this up and look inside here, then we can see that we have this ID or idle application. And we'll come back to that in just a second. So now that we have Python 3.6 installed, let's go back to our terminal and check our Python version again. So if I run that, actually, let me close down the terminal and open this back up just so that we're sure that we're starting with a fresh slate. So now if I run that Python version again, then most likely you're gonna see that it still says Python 2.7. Now the reason is because when we installed Python 3, it actually uses this Python 3 command instead. So if I instead use this Python 3 command and check that version, then we can see that we get Python 3.6 that we just installed. Now, if we want the Python command to use Python 3, then one way we can do this is to create an alias. Now, to do this, we can add a line to this .bash profile file. And if you don't know what that is, then don't worry about it too much. This is just going to allow us to associate the Python command with Python 3. So you can use any editor to edit this file. But since I'm already in the terminal, I'm just going to go ahead and use nano. And nano is pretty easy for beginners. So I will say nano. Now this is in your home directory. So a tilde means your home directory and then a slash. Now this file is called bash underscore profile. So now let's go ahead and open that up. Now within this file, you might realize that I have some more content here than you do. And these are just some uh, personal customizations that I have, but don't worry about any of this. If I go to the bottom here, and let me like make this just a little bit larger here. Now you should see that whenever you installed Python 3, that it actually added a few lines here at the bottom, and you should have these lines also. Now setting this path variable like it's doing here is what allows the Python 3 command to work. So we'll move down here below uh, to the bottom and add an alias. Now to do this, all we have to do is say alias 
uh, Python equals Python 3. And you want to make sure it looks exactly like this. Uh, no space between the equals or anything like that. So now to save this, we can just hit Control X to close, hit Y uh, that, to say that we want to save it, and then hit Enter to keep that same file name. So now if we quit out of our terminal and open this back up, and now let's check that Python version again. So I'm going to do Python dash dash version, and now we can see that it's using Python 3.6. Now, I probably should have mentioned this earlier, but you do not have to create that Python alias. If you wanted to, you could just use that Python 3 command to run all of your scripts. But I like to use this Python command, so that's why I personally like to create the alias. Okay, so now let's walk through how we install Python 3 for Windows. Now, if you're on a Mac and want to skip through this part, then you can click on the timestamp in the description below that skips forward to when both of these installations are complete. But this install for Windows actually doesn't take very long at all. Okay, so to check if Python is already installed, we can open up our command prompt by going down here to start and then search for CMD. And let's open up that. And I'm going to make this font a little bit bigger so that we can see here. I think I can click on properties and font and we'll go with something a little bit larger there, okay. Now to see if we have access to Python, we can just type in Python dash dash version. And most likely you'll see that this is not yet installed and get this Python is not recognized error. So to install this, we can just open up an internet browser and go to the Python website, which is python.org. And from here, we can click on downloads. And from this page, you can see that it's already detected that we are on Windows and has offered up either Python 3 or Python 2. Now, if you're learning Python, then you're definitely going to go, want to go with Python 3 unless you have a really good reason to do otherwise. So let's go ahead and go with uh, this download of Python 3.6. So let's go ahead and run this download, and we should get this pop-up. So I'm going to go ahead and run that. Now, this is an important step here. One thing that you're going to want to do is click this option to add Python 3.6 to your path. This will allow us to uh, get by without going into the advanced system settings and setting this path manually. And adding that to your path will allow the Python command to work within the command prompt. So with that selected, now let's go ahead and just click through this installation. And it says that setup was successful. So now that Python is installed, let's come down here to our command prompt and open it back up. Actually, let's uh, close this one down and start from scratch. So we'll open this back up, type in CMD, and open up that command prompt again. And now we can make sure that that installed by typing in Python and then dash dash version. And you can see here that it says that we're working with Python 3.6, so that's good. Now, if we come down here and click on Start, and all programs, then we'll see that we have this Python 3.6 folder here that was installed with Python. Within this folder, we can see that we have a program called uh, idle. And I'm going to come back to this idle program in just a second. So when I mention this program, then just remember that you can find it here within this Python 3.6 folder. So that is how we install Python for Windows. Now I'm going to switch back to my native operating system on the Mac, but from this point on, uh, Python is going to work the same for both operating systems, so everyone is going to be able to follow along. Okay, so now I'm just going to go ahead and minimize that. Okay, so now that we have Python installed, uh, now we can begin and go ahead and write our first bit of code by opening up either our terminal or our command prompt. And I'll just close this installation window down in the back here and center this. Okay, so now within the terminal or command prompt, if we just type in Python, then this will open what's called an interactive prompt. And we can see that it shows that we're using Python uh, 3.6. Now, the interactive prompt allows us to write one line of Python at a time. So, for example, for a Hello World application, then we could simply write print Hello World. And we can see that it prints that out. And we can also set variables. So I could say x is equal to, uh, equal to 10. And if I print out x, then we can see that we get 10. Now this interactive prompt is okay for testing Python commands, but we really want to have a Python file where we can write multiple lines and run an entire script. So let's exit this interactive prompt. And we can do that by typing exit and then opening close parentheses. So to create a Python file, 
we're going to need some kind of plain text editor. When we downloaded Python, it came with an editor called Idle. So let's open up that Idle program. So again, on Windows, that's in the Python 3.6 folder that we opened up earlier. And on the Mac, it's just down here in our applications. And we can go ahead and open this up. So I'm going to go ahead and make the font a little bit bigger here by going to my preferences, just so that everyone can see. And I'll bump this up to uh, 18 or so. OK, I think that's good. Now, by default, when we open up Idle, this is just another interactive prompt where we can write one line at a time. And you can usually tell when you're at an interactive prompt because of these three arrows here. So to create an actual file, we can click on File and New File. Now this will create a new file where we can write multiple lines of Python and actually make a script. So for our first script, let's just print out hello world like we did before. We can do that by calling the print function and then these opening and closing parentheses and then either single or double quotes and then typing in hello world. Now we're going to want to save this file. So we can save this by clicking on file and then save. And I'm going to call this intro.py, and I'm just going to save this to my desktop. So now I'll go ahead and save that. So now to run the Python file that we just created, we can go back to our terminal or our command prompt. And from here, we can type in Python. And then we want to type in the name of the file that we want to run. Now this is relative to the directory that we're currently in. So if we're in our home folder and you saved it to your desktop, then that should be in desktop. And then the name of that file is intro.py. So if we run that, then you can see that it printed out hello world. So we just ran our first Python program. Now I still have this Python file up over here. And real quick, let me show you how to do a single inline comment in Python, because I'll be using these inline comments throughout these tutorials and don't want them to throw you off. So in my script here, if I wanted to write a description of what's going on, then I could add a comment. And to do this, we can just start up here at the top line. And I'm going to go ahead and write a comment of what we're doing. So the, what it starts with the pound sign and then our comment. So I'll just say print. Uh, welcome message. Now, if I go ahead and save that file and then run this again from my desktop, then you can see that it didn't do anything to our script. It still just prints out hello world. So when we actually run our Python programs, these comments are ignored. Uh, it's only there for the developer and the programmer to actually see what's going on. Now you don't need anything fancy to run these Python scripts. So if you wanted to, then you could follow through all of my videos using this idle application like we have running here and then running the script from the command line. But if you plan on doing a lot of Python programming, then you'll likely want to upgrade to a better editor. Now you can use any kind of plain text text editor that you want. You can even use some command line editors like Vim or Emacs if you'd like. Uh, some of the most popular editors, and I have some of these pulled up in the browser here. So one very popular editor is Sublime Text, and that's at sublimetext.com. Another popular text editor is Atom, and that's at atom.io. And a very popular IDE is uh, the JetBrains PyCharm IDE. So Sublime Text and Atom are text editors, uh, but with a lot of extra functionality built in. And PyCharm is a full-blown IDE, and that will give you a lot of extra features that you might not find in other editors, like the ability to debug a running application and things like that. Now in this series of videos, I'm going to be using Sublime Text. Now I have a full video on how I set up and customize my Sublime Text, and I also have a full video on how to set up and customize Atom. So if you want to use either of those ed editors, then I highly recommend watching those videos. And I'll leave links to those in the description section below. Now one nice thing about using one of these editors is that you can run Python from directly within the editor. So I have the same intro.py file that we just created pulled up here in Sublime Text. And I can run this by going to Tools and Build. Or we could have just used that keyboard shortcut. But you can see that if we run that, then we get the same Hello World output that we got when we ran this file from our command line. So to follow along with these videos, you can use the idle application and use the command line to run those scripts, or you can set up one of these other text editors. The choice is completely up to you. Okay, so I think that is going to do it for this video. In this video, we walked through how to install Python on both Mac and Windows. We looked at how to run Python interactively within the terminal or command line, and we also saw how to create a Python file and execute that script.
So in the next video, we'll start learning about variables and data types. And specifically, we're going to look at the string data type and everything that we can do with those. But if anyone has any questions about what we covered in this video, then feel free to ask in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer those. Now, if you enjoy these tutorials and would like to support them, then there are several ways you can do that. The easiest way is to simply like the video and give it a thumbs up. And also it's a huge help to share these videos with anyone who you think would find them useful. And if you have the means, you can contribute through Patreon and there's a link to that page in the description section below. Be sure to subscribe for future videos and thank you all for watching.